Good afternoon, Kent Bame with Nine Business Group and Elevate Chat. Today we have the pleasure of Thomas O'Brien joining us with Hungry Canadian, I believe. Uh, Thomas, please introduce yourself, introduce us to your company, but more importantly, tell us what makes Hungry Canadian unique and fun and why people should care. Welcome. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Kent. I appreciate it. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Thomas O'Brien, the founder of Hungry Canadian, which is uh, destined to be hopefully Canada's next top and national food delivery app. Uh, started here in Canada, built by Canadians and for Canadians, uh, and to bolster the restaurant industry as we move forward through anything we might be faced with in the future, such as another COVID pandemic, for instance. <laughs> Yeah, um, Hungry Canadian was really just kind of like the brainchild of, you know, there's struggles in the industry like there always is for every sort of sector. And I saw a gap where we could make a difference by helping our restaurants as well as suiting the needs of the customers and making a lucrative uh, arrangement for drivers to make extra cash. And from that point forward, we kind of took off. Cool. So is it like skip the dishes per se? And and how would it be different if it's like it? Or if it's completely different, then please explain, because most of us are familiar with Skip the Dishes. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I get compared to Skip the Dishes all the time. Uh, there's nothing wrong with what they've done. I think they carved out a real pathway for people in this industry uh, to move forward and innovate within. So, you know, I thank you to them for that, I suppose. Uh, it is a very similar platform to Skip the Dishes. We offer a platform for our customers to make orders from their favorite restaurants through uh, as well as have restaurants have a receiving end to uh, accept, reject orders, uh, build new clientele lists. And we also have independent contractors that take uh, the orders and deliver them to your door. So very similar in that model. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so what's different about it? So what's different is that I aim to make a win-win-win sort of uh, platform. So I try to offer affordability, not just for my restaurants, uh, but also for my clientele by keeping delivery fees low but fair and keeping the fees to the restaurants low and uh, profitable for us to continue to offer such low rates, uh, as well as offering the best sort of uh, structure for drivers to be able to accept or reject or work on their own terms, you know, whatever life kind of throws at them. Um, but we do heavily focus on keeping our rates low for the restaurants so they don't have to bump their prices up for customers to pay a lot of money either. Excellent. Cool. Good for you. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge you've encountered uh, along the way starting your business? How did you overcome it? Um, and what is the result today? Yeah. So I think the hardest part about uh, that we had to break through here was a, a market that was very heavily marketed to being, uh, you know, uh, very convenient and affordable and uh, in, to a customer, it may have looked very affordable when our, our predecessors, uh, such as Skip, had started everything. Um, but then there's always things that, you know, need improvement on. And so the hardest part was breaking through and showing restaurants and customers and even drivers in some instances that we're just as good, if not better, if not just for you, but for the economy for the future to grow. So it took a lot of like, you know, trying to uh, really talk to the owners of the restaurants directly and lay out the line and just say, look, I don't even need to know what you pay my competitors, but what I know is that you will pay this rate because I don't need a lot, right? And you don't need to pay me a lot. We are surrounded by technology today. So this is very, you know, tangible stuff that it shouldn't cost you a whole lot of money, of money to do so. Um, so some of the things that we tackled it with, again, like I said, talking to the restaurants, also showing the customers that we don't need to make your, your dinner expensive by bumping up the cost of the restaurant. Um, and the outcome today so far is that people love us. You know, people love that they don't have to spend more money than they already know they're going to when they order out. People also understand that, you know, they can pick up from us. They can also reserve a seat inside the restaurant themselves. So it's more than just ordering food, paying out, you know, parts of your paycheck. It's about creating a better experience all around. And that's Excellent. kind of where we ended. No, it's great. Cool. Um, so what do you, what is one thing, you know, now that you wish you would have known when you ended business, when you started this? <laughs> uh, there's quite a few things, actually. <laughs> Everyone, you know, you see these really successful entrepreneurs and you're just like, wow, it just, it looks so easy. Like, you know, I could have done that. 
that was probably the biggest part for me that was just like, you know, I was so wrong. <laughs> uh, you know, the biggest challenges that I've faced that I wish I knew were going to be an obstacle in the past would have been uh, even even dealing with CRA to make sure that your your payroll's done properly or your taxes are done properly. Um, but as well, also knowing that, you know, you can't swing for the floor uh, and, and expect to be able to pay, you know, pay yourself and pay other people and be able to offer the great product you want to. You have to definitely set those those boundaries and, and goals and uh, and kind of draw a line in the sand for everybody. Good, excellent. That's uh, so. So in essence, it's it's part one. There's everything from the CR, the CRA, the paperwork, but then almost a paraphrase. There's almost that. I have no idea what I didn't know when I started, and everything was a giant learning curve. Absolutely, absolutely everything, and even today, you just there's something new that you learn and you figure out and. You win some, you lose some, but you definitely learn from it every time. All right. Uh, my, the, we've inserted this question, and I'm curious, because uh, the answers have been fun lately, so I'm looking forward to asking it. If there was a pirate in your business, what would they be stealing? <laughs> and any idea where they're hiding it on you? That's really an interesting question, and I love how you worded it, because it's so different from what, <laughs> what I've been used to hearing or even heard in other interviews. Um, I guess, like, you know, I really want to take it literally because when you think about stealing and especially in the industry that we deal with, you know, it's 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 our data, our customers' data. Um, and, and really cybersecurity is super important. The unfortunate part is the answer of that is I don't know where they would hide it. And that's the scariest part about it. <laughs> but uh, definitely that would be the biggest thing that they would probably be after. And uh, that's yeah, I do everything I can to prevent that. <laughs> That's a great answer. I think there's so much so much truth to that. Uh, one fellow last week um, for him was about culture, just oh, yeah. the the attitude of the employees, and and so that was his. It's kind of more like it was around the team and the culture, and that's what's fun. I think I like about that question is we all feel it different, and that's exactly it. Because if I just say the average person is, what's the biggest challenge you face? It's like. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I can use the term pirate, to your point, it's it's visceral. It's like, yeah, they are stealing something. And what is the most important thing to me? So thank you. Yeah. What is your definition of a successful business? Again, I have kind of two answers for you on that. Um, obviously, you know, what most people probably go to, and I know that before starting this business, I certainly define success in a business as this, is having lots of zeros in your bank account, you know, lots of big dollars and, and being able to, um, kind of do whatever and whenever you want uh, with your business. Um, but I've, as I've grown as an entrepreneur and as, you know, even just as a person, uh, the definition of success inside the business to me more looks like, are my restaurant partners happy? Are they able to keep doing what they do? Are they able to keep, um, you know, providing the same service that they love to? Are my customers satisfied? Are my drivers able to make the wage that they're expecting to make at the end of the day? And if I can do that, then that is what I defined as being successful. Perfect. So it's about, for you, it went from, yeah, I want to make some money, but now it's like, can I keep my partners happy? Can I be a good business partner? And can I make a living wage and help my team members have a successful life and a good life as an employer? Great answer. Absolutely. What do you want to be known for? Again, I got a few different perspectives on this. You know, this year has been a, a big growing thing for me. So I want to be known for two things. One, I want to be known for a person that believes in his country and that believes that we have more to offer than just whatever, you know, what, what's been laid out for us before, uh, beforehand. So I want to be known for creating a profitable and stable economy within the food industry for Canada and for Canadians. And then on the other side, I also want to be known for the person that was a single dad that lost his wife and still made sure um, that he put his family first and, uh, and and everybody kind of got better out for what happened today. It's pretty impactful. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a dad of four, married for 28 years, um, and none of those are easy at any point in time, so let alone to grow a business, build a business, and still be there for uh, your kid. I think just the one um, yeah. and, and be the dad. That's, that's pretty good. So, and it's one of the things I guess I love about business. It's a passion of mine is um, business can serve us in any way. 
It, it's, it's yeah. you know, to me, it's a vehicle to create a lifestyle. It's a vehicle that can give you choice. And for you, the choice is to make money, to make a living wage and still be a full-time dad. You know, yeah. that's pretty cool because businesses can also go the other way without that choice and proactivity. <laughs> they go down real fast and it can burn us out. So good for you. So um, yeah. where can people get more information? One last plug for Hungry Canadian. And what are you looking for as far as referrals other than clients? Yeah, um, you know, you can definitely learn more about us on our Facebook page, you know, facebook.com forward slash Hungry Canadian. Um, or you can go to our website directly at hungrycanadian.com. Um, as far as referrals, I mean, you know, we're definitely looking at growing uh, the, the business itself. Um, we're looking into licensing to expand our brand across Canada. Uh, anyone that's ready to take that step or has initiative that wants to support us in our growth. Uh, we're also looking for ways that we can give back to our community. So if somebody has questions for us and we can help, then I'm happy to uh, lend an ear and lend a hand. Sounds good. Thanks very much, Thomas. Have a great afternoon. You've been a great guest and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Ken. You're welcome.